ba. This is gonna be the quickest. Hello, welcome to part seven of fourteen, Bullif Castle. Now, this is of course the sea power behind the Ring of Iron Nay Stone Long Patrol series, and this is Birth Castle. Honestly, I've got the least pictures of this thing because, as much as I love the Lith Castle, it has a absolutely torrid history, and there is very little other than the earthwork surviving to this day. Again, you will notice though, what is it? Uh, what is there that it's obviously about? It's a crossing point of the River Wye. It's a critical crossing point. Between the most of uh, the most southerly parts of Northern Wales and some of the critical parts of Southern Wales, it's again, it's a perfect example of the fact that the English really do, the English king at least, feels like Southern Wales is pretty secure. In 1277, he's not worried about it. There are enough local magnates who are loyal to him, and there are not, the local people seem loyal enough to him, and they're providing quite a large chunk of his armies for fighting in Wales. So, um, yeah. But that means he has to protect them and their lands, and that's where Bullif comes in. Now, let's get into the history. As I say, a history most torrid. It is really not good. There was a pre-existing Monton Bailey castle, um, surrounded by two baileys and a further boundary wall originally before Edward even got here. The older castle, well, between the fighting between the Norman, especially the March of Lords, and the Welsh Lords, who would often at times be fighting, at times intermarrying, at times fighting because they claimed they owned a castle thanks to inheritance through marriage, rather than fighting because we're Welsh and we want the Normans out of here. No, 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 that's my castle through marriage. Um changes hands several times and gets modified several times. In 1260, Llewellyn Ap Gruffydd takes the castle and destroys it. Remember, this is during the previous reign. This is during Henry III's reign. Now, by the time Edward I arrives, we're not quite sure how much is actually still the exciting of the original Strutter Castle. We know pretty much Edward considers this a blank slate. And it starts in May 1277 and it continues until August 1282, when originally the castle was left unfinished because of lack of money. More likely that Edward doesn't feel he needs to pay for it because. Llewellyn at Gruffydd had been killed, and um, he was now concentrating instead of defence on invasion of Gwynedd. It's a comparatively cheap castle to build. Because of the earthworks already present, it cost less than £1,700 at a time, which is comparatively cheap. Unfortunately, in 1294, it's besieged by the revolt of Madoc at Llewellyn. It's not taken. And in 1301, Edward gives the castle to his son Edward to try and organise and support. So between 1310 and 1315, Roger Mortimer serves as Castellan of Bullif. Now here is where the start's problems get up, because Edward I 
when he succeeds his uh, Edward the Second, when he succeeds Edward the First, he gifts the castle to his wife Isabella, who then leases it or rents it back to Roger Mortimer, which introduces her to Mortimer, who eventually becomes Isabella's lover, and subsequently obtains an agreement that when it become his outright when Isabella died. And is, of course, the one who supports Isabella in executing a coup against Edward II, which results in Edward's death. In 1330, however, Edward III reaches adulthood and is rather like his granddaddy. And he's able to arrange for Mortimer and Isabella to be captured. He has Mortimer executed for treason and seizes all of Mortimer's properties. Berlef is taken by Gilbert Talbot, first Baron Talbot, the then Justicar of South Wales. Now, Edward III is assisted in all his takeover by Alice de Lacey and her second husband, Eubulus Lestrange. So Lestrange was one of his key commanders in his early reign, and Alice de Lacey was a very powerful and rich nobleman. Edward grants them Bullis Castle for life. However, when Uberus dies, Alice ends up being forcibly remarried, remarried by Hugh de Frame, who basically Let's put it this way. He forces himself on her, and as a result, he gets to marry her. It wasn't considered right then. But she was powerful and rich, but had no family who were still alive to come and act in her defence, unless the king chose to get involved. And the king at the time decided that Politically, it wasn't a good thing to get involved. So Hugh de Frayne becomes acknowledged as Lord of Bulleth, and Alice dies childless in 1348. Which point, Edward grants Bulleth to his son, the Black Prince. And in 1359, the Black Prince re-establishes a rental arrangement with the Mortimer family, who are still very strong in Wales at this point, but retains the right to garrison the castle in times of war. It's attacked by Owen Glendare's forces um, in, well, in the early 15th century. Um, the garrison was under the command of then of Sir John Oldcastle. Basis apparently for Shakespeare's false stuff. Repaired in 1409 for a, a bill of 400 pounds. The final rental arrangement is terminated during the Wars of the Roses when Richard York claims the crown. And, well, unfortunately, of course, he dies and all sorts of people, other people die. And his eventual heir, Elizabeth of York, marries King Henry VII, who was the Lancastrian counterpart, um, claimant, and so it sort of goes back to the royalty, and in November 1493, Bulliff is re-established as a march of lordship for the son of them, Arthur, who dies childless in 1502. That was helpful. And then, during Henry VIII's reign, the castle burns down, the ruins are raided by the local population to provide building material for their properties. And that's all basically the stonework has disappeared now. There is no stonework to be found. So that's why we have these pictures.
castles do not always have a good history. In this case, this is a long way from the sea. So this is the big argument probably against my point of them being maritime power as well as castle. But it's also at the edge. Yeah, quite a large river. And it's at the edge of the area they already control. It's more of a defensive than an offensive mechanism. And that's one of the reasons why money stops so quickly for it. It's not about controlling Wales. It's about the, uh, controlling the part of Wales you haven't had control over. It's about, the, about defending the part of Wales you have had control over. And when you have security, you don't really need to worry about it. Saying that, though... It is a bit of a poison chalice, that castle, in that no one who owns it seems to have that great an end. Which I'm surprised, looking back in history, is why the Welsh government has been so it is currently looking after it. I'd be sort of going, looking at that history going, can we find someone else to give this to? I don't know. Which people do we not particularly like and want to wish a bad luck on them? Oh, so, what have we got coming up? We have a whole lot of lives uh, going to be coming up, and I've got them worked out till August the date. We have long patrols. We have the sea power behind the Ring of Iron, which currently this is going on. Uh, we have Robert Calder, and then we have eventually the patron-inspired Churchill's initiatives. Crackpot schemes are good ideas, badly executed. Oh, Gallipoli and the Dardanelles, World War Two, all those sort of fun things. It's gonna be fun. Hopefully, I'm gonna get the book I want for that one. Anyway. Thank you very much to, uh, to everyone who's been watching these videos. Thank you to everyone who likes these videos. Thank you to everyone who shared these videos. Thank you to everyone who's subscribed or pressed the little bell down there to get alerted when these videos come live. Thank you to everyone who has decided to join the channel and is getting those emojis and is contributing that way. Thank you to everyone who's a patron. You're making my research possible. And everyone who watches the videos and sees the adverts makes this uh, my research possible. The people who do the super chats, who join the channel, or who are patrons, you are making my research possible, so thank you. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do all I'm doing. And, um, thank you very much. Hope you're having a good time, and hope you're chatting away on Discord. Take care.